Maccabim Arishon 1 Maccabees 6. About that time, King Antichius, traveling through the high countries, heard say that Elimas in the country of Persia was a great, rather, was a city greatly renowned for riches, silver and gold, and that there was in it a very rich temple wherein were coverings of gold and breastplates and shields which Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian king, who reigned first among the Yavanim, had left there. Wherefore he came and sought to take the city and to spoil it. But he was not able, because they of the city, having had warning thereof, rose up against him in battle, so he fled and departed thence with great heaviness, and returned to Babel. Moreover, there came one who brought him tidings into Persia, that the armies which went against the land of Yahuda were put to flight, and that Lysias, who went forth first with a very, rather with a great power, was driven away of the Yahudim, and that they were made strong by the armor and power and store of spoils which they had gotten of the armies whom they had destroyed. Also that they had pulled down the abomination which he had set up upon the altar in Jerusalem, and that they had compassed about the sanctuary with high walls as before and his city, Beat Surah. Now when the king heard these words, he was astonished and sore moved, whereupon he laid him down upon his bed and fell sick for grief, because it had not befallen him as he had looked, rather, because it had not befallen him as he looked for. And there he continued many days, for his grief was ever more and more, and he made account that he should die. Wherefore he called for all his friends, and said unto him, them, The sleep is gone from my eyes, and my heart fails for very care. And I thought with myself, into what tribulation am I come, and how great a flood of misery is it, wherein now I am, for I was bountiful and beloved in my power. But now I remember the evils that I did at Jerusalem, and that I took all the vessels of gold and silver that were therein, and sent to destroy the inhabitants of Yahuda without a cause. I perceive, therefore, that for this cause these troubles are come upon me. And behold, I perish through great grief, in a strange land. Then called he for Philip, one of his friends, who had made ruler over all his realm, rather, who he made ruler over all his realm, and gave him the crown and his robe and his signet. To the end, he should bring up his son Antichius and nourish him up for the kingdom. So King Antichius died there in the hundred forty and ninth year. Now when Lysias knew that the king was dead, he set up Antichius his son, whom he had brought up, being young, to reign in his stead. And his name he called Upator. About this time, they that were in the tower shut up Yashadael round about the sanctuary, and sought also their hurt and the strengthening of the heathen. Wherefore Yahuda, purposing to destroy them, called all the people together to besiege them. So they came together and besieged them in the hundred and fiftieth year, and he made mounts for shot against them and other engines. Albeit certain of them that were besieged got forth, unto whom some wicked men of Yashadael joined themselves. 
And they went unto the king and said, How long will it be ere you execute judgment and avenge our brethren? We have been willing to serve your father and to do as he would have us and to obey his commandments. For which cause they of our nation besiege the tower and are alienated from us. Moreover, as many of us as they could light on, they slew and spoiled our inheritance. Neither have they stretched out their hand against us only, but also against their borders. And behold, this day are they besieging the tower at Yerushalayim to take it. The sanctuary also in Bayat Surah have they fortified. Wherefore, if you do not repent, rather, if you do not prevent them quickly, they will do the greater things than these. Neither shall you be able to rule them. Now, when the king heard this, he was angry, and gathered together all his friends the captains of his army, and those that had charge of the horse. There came also unto him from other kingdoms and from isles of the sea bands of hired soldiers, so that the number of his army was a hundred thousand footmen and twenty thousand horsemen and two and thirty elephants exercised in battle. These went through Idam and pitched against Bayat Surah, which they assaulted many days, making engines of war. But they of Bayat Surah came out, and burned them with fire, and fought valiantly. Upon this, Yahuda removed from the tower and pitched in Bayat Zakariahu, over against the king's camp. Then the king, rising very early, marched fiercely with his host toward Beit Zakariahu, where his enemies, rather armies, made them ready to battle and sounded the shofars. And to the end they might provoke the elephants to fight. They showed them the blood of grapes and mulberries. Moreover, they divided the beasts among the armies, and for every elephant they appointed a thousand men armed with coats of mail and with helmets of brass on their heads. And beside this, for every beast were ordained five hundred horsemen of the best. Those were ready at every occasion, wheresoever the beast was, and whithersoever the beast went, they went also. Neither departed they from him. And upon the beasts were there strong towers of wood, which covered every one of them, and were girt fast unto them with devices. There were also upon every one two and thirty strong men that fought upon them, beside the Indian that ruled him. As for the remnant of the horsemen, they set them on this side and on that side at the two parts of the host, giving them signs what to do, and being harnessed all over amidst the ranks. Now when the sun shone upon the shields of gold and brass, the mountains glistered with their, therewith, and shined like lamps of fire. So part of the king's army was, rather, part of the king's army being spread upon the high mountains in part on the valleys below, they marched on safely and in order. Wherefore all that heard the noise of their multitude, and the marching of the company, and the rattling of the harness, were moved. For the army was very great and mighty. Then Yahuda and his host drew near, and entered into battle. And there were slain of the king's army six hundred men. Eleazar also, surnamed Savaran, 
perceiving that one of the beasts armed with a royal harness was higher than all the rest, and supposing that the king was upon him, putting himself in jeopardy, to the end he might deliver his people and get him a perpetual name. Wherefore he ran upon him courageously through the midst of the battle, slaying on the right hand and on the left, so that they were divided from him on both sides. Which done, he crept under the elephant, and thrust him under, and slew him, whereupon the elephant fell down upon him, and there he died. Habit, the rest of the Yahudim, seeing the strength of the king, and the violence of his forces, turned away from them, then the king's army went up to Yerushalayim to meet them, and the king pitched his tents against Yahda and against Mount Zion. But with them that were in Beit Surah he made peace, for they came out of the city, because they had no victuals there to endure the siege, it being a year of rest to the land. So the king took Beit Surah and set a garrison there to keep it. As for the sanctuary, he besieged it many days and set there artillery with engines and instruments to cast fire and stones and pieces to cast spears and slings. Whereupon they also made engines against their engines and held them battle a long season. Yet at the last, their vessels being without victuals, for that it was the seventh year, and they and Yahuda that were delivered from the other nations had eaten up the remnant of the store. There were but a few left in the sanctuary, because the famine did so prevail against them that they were fain to disperse themselves, every man to his own place. At that time Lysias heard say that Philip, whom Antichius the king, while he lived, had appointed to bring up his son Antichius, that he might be king, was returned out of Persia and Madai, and the king's host also that went with him, and that he sought to take unto him the ruling of the affairs. Wherefore he went in all haste, and said to the king and the captains of the host and the company, we decay daily, and our victuals are but small, and the place we lay siege unto us is strong, and the affairs of the kingdom lie upon us. Now therefore let us be friends with these men, and make peace with them, and with all their nation, and covenant with them, that they shall live after their Torah, as they did before. For they are therefore displeased, and have done all these things, because we abolished their Torah. So the king and the princes were content. Wherefore he sent unto them to make peace, and they accepted thereof. Also the king and the princes made an oath unto them, whereupon they went out of the stronghold. Then the king entered into Mount Zion, but when he saw the strength of the place, he broke his oath that he had made, and gave commandment to pull down the wall round about. Afterward departed he in all haste, and returned unto Antioch, where he found Philip to be master of the city. So... He fought against him and took the city by force.